Chapter 1, Introduction PEDs, Performance Enhancing Drugs, have been a scourge in professional athletics over the last two decades. Now, you may have heard about Mark McGuire, who broke the home run record in Major League Baseball in 1998, only to be disgraced when it came to light that he was juiced up with PEDs, Performance Enhancing Drugs. In 2007, Barry Bonds was indicted for using PEDs, performance enhancing drugs. And of course, Lance Armstrong is another notoriously iconic figure in the discussion of performance enhancing drugs. Armstrong fell from grace and from being America's wonder boy to America's whipping boy when it was discovered that the amazing string of seven consecutive victories in the Tour de France were probably under the influence of PEDs, performance enhancing drugs. Now, legal ramifications aside, don't you sometimes wish as a business owner or organizational leader or manager that there was some form of performance enhancing drug that would kickstart your business, your organization and your department into peak next level performance? Sure you do. Might as well admit it. You want those drugs. Well, I might have such a PED for your business, your department, or your organization. In fact, I might have three such performance enhancing drugs that can propel your business, organization, and your department into new realms of innovation, strategic effectiveness, and profitability. Keep on reading and you will discover and become addicted to these performance enhancing drugs for your business organization. However, in the interest of political correctness and social sensitivity, let us call these PEDs the three performance enhancing demands. Think of the Ten Commandments. Notwithstanding your religious life philosophies, I'm going to guess you've heard about the Ten Commandments. Rules to live by, some say. Well, our three demands, while not of the same divine origin, oh, well, maybe they are, are three strategies business leaders and managers should adopt to propel their business organizations and departments to greater levels of enhanced performance. The core context. The core context answers the two basic questions regarding any book I write. The first question is, what is this book trying to say? This is my core message. And secondly, why is this book saying what it's saying? This is the reason or rationale underpinning my core message. So here is my proposition to you. Here is the what I am saying and why I am saying it in this book. First, what am I saying? My core message. The key and most critical ingredient to the success of any business organization is leadership. Not only the leadership of top level executives or the owners, but what I refer to as downline leadership which includes staff down the line as far as your janitor. Everyone in your organization is a leader, and this paradigm is critical to incorporate into your organizational culture if the organization as a whole is to become a leader in its market space. Everybody leads somebody, either overtly or covertly, either intentionally or unintentionally. Even if the person you lead is yourself, we all have to get someone to do something, to go somewhere, or to behave in a certain way to accomplish some predetermined objective. In essence, this is our definition of leadership. Leadership is getting someone, even yourself, to take action, moving towards the attainment of specific goals and objectives. This, of course, is a simplified definition, but it gets to the essence of what leaders do. So my core message is that successful leadership 
breeds successful organizations. Successful leadership creates results in successful organizations. Now the why, my context. Why is this important for our discussion? The context for my core statement that successful leadership breeds successful organizations is the process of leadership. That is the process of motivating people to take action and move in a certain direction. How that is done, how not to do motivation, the pros and cons, advantages and disadvantages of getting people to follow, or for that matter, getting yourself to follow as we discuss in the chapter on self-leadership. This is the context of my core message. This is why I say what I say. This is why I write what I write in this book. Join us now in chapter two.